WSDQ Dunlap, WEPG South Pittsburgh, The Copperhead, WSDT Saudi Daisy, Chattanooga. The viewpoints expressed on Liberty Works Radio Network are not necessarily those of the network, its affiliates, or sponsors. This is Liberty Works Radio Network. Now live from coast to coast and around the globe, more real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Carol Confidential on the Liberty Works Radio Network. This is Commissioner Richard Rothschild talking to you on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon from our conservative bunker here in Westminster, Maryland. And with me is Commissioner Robin Frazier. Good evening, Robin. Good evening. It is a beautiful day again. I love yeah. this time of year. Beautiful day to talk about communism. <laughs> <laughs> if we must. I'm sorry, folks. I, I couldn't resist it. I know you'd get a chuckle out of it, those of you out there in radio land. <laughs> so, Robin, um, I presume that we would continue our discussion about Agenda 2030. Yeah. Uh, which fun. is which uh, we started to talk about last time. We only really just scratched the surface. Um, this is the uh, this is the follow-on to Agenda 21. I think we did so much damage to Agenda 21 that it almost became a dirty word. So I guess they figured they had to rebrand themselves. Well, uh, 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 that could very well be part of it. And I think also their goals were to be met by 2015. And uh, they certainly haven't met their goals. So they've they've added another fifteen years there, but um, uh, I'm sure. I mean, in my opinion, they probably reached uh, more of their goals than they should have. Yeah, so. I um, I'm looking at their new manifestation. I don't know why they call it twenty third agenda twenty third. I think they should just call it CIU. Communism is us. <laughs> And then we could really have an honest discussion about how we're going to move forward in the world, whether we're going to use a communist model where the government controls the factors of production, or whether we're going to use a capitalist uh, model where the people own the factors of production. And it's interesting because they say here in their website, which, by the way, for those of you who'd like to follow along, it's sustainabledevelopment.un.org. SustainableDevelopment.un.org, and then it has a forward slash post 2015 slash transforming our world. Transforming our world. Yeah. And you know, they talk about their determined, they say, we are determined to end poverty and hunger. Well, then you should have just copied the business model that the United States used in the, 19, in the 20th century, and then you would know how to eliminate poverty and hunger. Right. Instead, they want to copy the business model, if I may use the term, political system that's used by countries that are mired in poverty and hunger. And, Absolutely. Uh, it's uh, so crazy, upside down and backwards. I mean, it, it's hard to believe that anyone could say those words with serious faith. Well, um, they're depending on... They're, they're depending on clueless politicians to echo these words. Because afterwards, when you, when you say that, I'm for sustainable development and Agenda 2030, cue the harpsichords and the angels and the clouds of heaven. Give me a halo to put on my head. I'm for sustainable development and Agenda 2030. I must be noble. I must be just a half a step below God if I'm for those things. Yeah, Rich, but you're a commie if you believe in this stuff here. Oh, we well, they do about believe that, it that they're good. a half a step below God, or maybe they believe they are God, and that's part of the whole problem. <laughs> so. so I'm going to backtrack a little bit, read some of their goals, uh, okay. their beliefs. We have prosperity. They are determined, says we, we, they say, of course, it's always we. Yeah, whoever well, we they, are, right? Huh? Yeah, we, we are determined to ensure. We are determined to ensure. Why don't they just say we are determined that all human beings can enjoy. But anyway, they say we are determined to ensure that all human beings can enjoy prosperous and fulfilling lives and that economic, social, and technological progress occurs in harmony with nature. This is a very interesting sentence. It's a very interesting statement. Mm -hmm. We're determined to ensure that all human beings can enjoy. Well, if you, if you really want to ensure that, then you would certainly you would, you would adopt the, uh, the United States Constitution and embrace capitalism if they're determined to ensure. Uh, I would agree with that. 
But I think they have a whole other idea in mind, especially since they're insuring to make sure that anything that human beings do is in harmony with nature. Now, of course, it says here that there'll be economic, social. Let's take, let's take the sentence apart. So we're determined to ensure that all human beings can enjoy prosperous and fulfilling lives. And then it goes on to saying that economic, social, and technical progress occurs. Let's, let's do a time out there. Economic, social, and technical progress. How about freedom? Yeah, freedom is uh, the most important part and the most important thing that drives us here. And uh, that's everything that's good about America is missing in this Agenda 2030. Mm-hmm. Everything. So economic. Freedom so, being so this is not a one. this is not a slip of the tongue, Robin. When they say economic, social, technological progress, the, the fact that uh, individual freedom, progress in terms of promoting human freedom and happiness, that's not a that's not an that's not an oversight. It is an it is a deliberate omission because there's not going to be more individual freedom. Absolutely not. And let's go to the last well, they part think of- they, that's I mean we had this discussion a little bit last time i really it really gets on my nerves when we, whoever we are, think that we know what makes everybody happy mm-hmm. I mean that in and of itself ought to you know bring you to a a halt and say, "I'm not reading any more of this because who are they, and how do they know what makes me happy?" <laughs> and I have the same problem with the quality of life in our own master plan in Carroll County. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the last third of the sentence, uh, where they say uh, they talk about fulfilling people should have fulfilling lives and their economic, social, and technological progress, and that says occurs in harmony with nature. That mm-hmm. economic progress occurs in harmony with nature, social progress and technological process occurs in harmony with nature. What, what, what does that mean? Yeah, well, that's the environmental side uh, that they use really to control us, although there are some that love Mother Earth uh, more than Father God, and so they they think that uh, the environmental stuff is more important than human beings, but it's mostly used just to control us. So if I burn propane to heat my built-in swimming pool, is that in harmony with nature? I doubt it in their mind. <laughs> See, I think so. I think you're right. If I use gasoline to fuel my SUV, is that in harmony with nature? No, not in their use, mind. If I use propane to cook a T-bone steak for me and my for oh. my friends and me, is that in harmony with nature? Well, that, that's not in harmony with nature in two ways. Because number one, you're eating meat. <laughs> well, I, 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 exactly. You're eating with propane. So, okay, let's keep going. If I if I like to have a beautiful uh, view, view, viewscapes from my home, so I buy a house on three acres of land and I cut my grass with a tractor that burns diesel fuel, is that in harmony with nature? Not in their opinion. Mm-hmm. If I ride a motorcycle rather than a bicycle for recreation, is that in harmony with nature? Not in their opinion. Uh-huh. However, they will ride uh-huh. their motorcycle, SUV, or anything they want, because somehow they're above that. But everyone else needs to, to ride a bike or walk. Now, if I like to go out fishing on a powerboat that burns gasoline, is that in harmony with nature? No, you better get that pedal boat out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If I like to take a vacation and fly to Europe uh, every every other year with my wife, enjoy the Swiss Alps, and I fly on a plane that fuels as jet, uses jet fuel, is that in harmony with nature? Only if it's on Air Force One. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think you, I think I think my point is becoming clear. Robin, what is my point about what's in harmony with nature? What's my point? That everything that uh, human beings do uh, to live, in their opinion, unless they're total basic, which I'm not even sure exactly what it is, is not in harmony with nature. The point is, that's correct, Robin. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, is that nothing you do, what's in harmony with nature will only be what they say is in harmony with nature. You want to go home to your air-conditioned house and watch a large screen TV? Well, if they determine that air conditioning is not sustainable, and they've already determined that, according to Marie Strong, then you're not in harmony with nature. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this stuff 
may best be described by a word that begins with the letter B and ends with the letter T. It's, <laughs> but since we're on the radio, I'll refer to it as happy talk. This is crap designed to fill the minds of uneducated people with mush. It's pretty from afar, but when you really stop to apply an intellectual honesty test to it, it's far from pretty. This is bad, bad stuff. Because what all these things mean about progress that's in human nature, it leaves the subjective determination not up to the individual, individual businesswoman, businessman, homeowner, landowner, automobile owner, motorboat owner, eater, diner. It leaves it up to a politician. They can control right, every element. Right, and it's not progress at all. It's they not can, progress at all. Well, it is progress it, from their perspective. It's Marx. It, it, it's progress it, it, in Marxism. It takes everyone backwards. I mean, well, if you can't do any of those things, if you're not producing gasoline and propane and building automobiles and being able to be mobile uh, beyond how far you can get on a bike, you are impeding progress. You it's are only, not. It's only um, backward if you believe in the Constitution and individual freedom. If you believe in government control and the police state, it's, it's, it's progress. Right? So it's progress towards their agenda, which is what they would like to get to by 2030. Robin, I guarantee you that if you took the sentence and put it in front of 100 high school graduates, 95 of them would look at the sentence and say, sounds good to me. Yeah, well, and, you know, they're learning um, probably the good sense of the word. Uh, they're, you know, taught a worldview that's different. And that's why we're in trouble, because... You know, we believe we're to worship the creator, not the creation, um, because that is our worldview, that our founding fathers, uh, you know, um, founded this country upon um, the principles that are found in the Bible and and the, the God of the Bible, Jehovah God, the creator. We say we're endowed by our creator with unalienable rights. They're not being taught those things. And so there's a whole different focus. The focus is from Mother Nature instead of from Father God, and it's totally different. So these people are pantheists. They are, they have, there's, in other words, there's religion embedded in this. They believe in pantheism. Mm -hmm. They're pantheists. So here we go. We have, a, we, have a, we have a violation of the separation of church and state. Well, actually, they go on to say that all countries are expected to contractually agree to this. So they're now demanding, using your argument, Robin, which I agree is correct, they're demanding that we adopt a religion, the religion being pantheism. Right. Worship of the earth. There you go, I boys and girls. I, I believe that's correct. You don't like Christianity? You don't want it to be the, you, don't, you, 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 want to, you want to shut up Christians and Jews from speaking? Well, you better be prepared to embrace pantheism because that's what this U.N. agenda is going to do. It's going to force a worship of the earth on you, and that's exactly what it is. It's, it's a religion. And, of course, once God is out of the picture, from whom come our rights, then our rights come from the government and apparently from the U.N. if we all signed a contract. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's not a pretty picture. <laughs> and it's certainly not freedom. So um, what's his name, our friend down there in Venezuela? What's his name? I'm sure I'm having a memory lapse. What's the president of Venezuela, the dictator of Venezuela, what's his name? I don't know. Well, I can't remember. I, I, I'm, I, I sorry. I'm just know. having a mind freeze right now. But so, like, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want the uh, president of Venezuela telling you what's good for you? Yeah, well, when they all get stuff. together and vote, we definitely are in the minority. We only get one vote. And just think of who all the other countries are. Yeah. And, of course, the, the Middle Eastern countries will vote, but their vote doesn't mean anything because they lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's uh, quite the mess. I don't know why anybody wants to go there. It's quite fascinating, isn't it? Well, we've got about 30 seconds left in this segment, then we'll get to another. Oh, we got less than that. All right, stay with us, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going we're gonna to dissect the, their statement with respect to peace. It looks good, pretty from afar, but far from pretty. Stay with us. We, Robin and I will dissect their statement about peace and determine whether it's really good or really bad. You're listening to Liberty Works Radio Network on LWRN.net. 
Robin and I will be back with you in five minutes to continue to give you our very adroit analysis of all of the crapola in Agenda 2030. Welcome back to the Liberty Works Radio Network. You're listening to Carol Confidential on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. This is Commissioner Richard Rothschild, and I'm welcoming back my good friend, Commissioner Robin Frazier. Hi, Robin. Hello there. So, folks, we're going to uh, continue our discussion. What Robin and I are doing is we're dissecting some of the language in Agenda 2030. For those of you who just joined us, it's the new generation from Agenda 21. They've decided to rebrand themselves, Agenda 2030. I say it's because we did so much damage to them under Agenda 21. It got to the point where just mentioning it was a bad word in any government building. So we're going to do everything we can, Robin, to uh, bring the public up to speed and uh, make sure that we reveal as many facts as possible about Agenda 2030 with the hopes that uh, we can inflict uh, as much damage on this agenda as we did on Agenda 21, where you and I and our leadership were successful in reducing the number of members in the, war, in the United States by hundreds of counties and towns across America pulled out uh, thanks to the uh, leadership of Carroll County and most particular you, yeah. Robin, myself, and we even had the support of the other members of the Board of Commissioners at that point. So I'll give them yeah, credit. Yes, that was Doug and Howard, and Haven Schumer. Fuller's good uh, research. Yep, Doug, <laughs> yep, and that was Dave Rash, uh, Shoemaker, and uh, Howard. They have gotten, uh, they, unfortunately, that uh, level of consistency is not there anymore. So let's go back to, uh, I want to I analyze another statement, ladies and gentlemen. I use the term that this stuff sounds uh, pretty from afar, but it's far from pretty when you analyze it. One second, please. So um, they talk about peace. Mm -hmm. We are determined to foster peaceful, just, and inclusive societies which are free from fear and violence. There can be no sustainable development without peace and no peace without sustainable development. Now, I want to I analyze this term. Okay, we are don't determined. go for it, Rich, because okay. this is a very yeah. interesting statement. We, it is an interesting statement, is because, and as I said before, I think that if you took 100 high school graduates, 95 of them would look at that and say, it sounds good to me. But let's analyze it. First off, if I say I'm determined to do something, I'm determined to move your car if you block my driveway. What does that imply if I say I'm determined? It means I'm going to do it. As my grandmother would say, come hell or high water. Come hell or high, yes. And it means, and if I necessary, I will employ force. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. So they are going to do whatever it takes to foster peaceful, just, and inclusive societies. So let's just work with peaceful societies. So if it's 1930s Germany, we talked about this last week, and I have storm, German stormtroopers, the SS, patrolling all of Germany's streets, carrying their German whatever firearms they use, and marching down the steps intimidating people, so they all lock themselves in their homes. Is that peace? Uh... I guess in one sense it is. Yes, it is. It's peace. <laughs> you know, there's nothing happening it's, out in the streets. <laughs> it's peace through intimidation, isn't it? Yeah. It's peace through intimidation. It's certainly not freedom. <laughs> it's far from freedom, but it is uh, peaceful, I suppose. I could have peace between any five gang members in Baltimore City if I stood 100 yards away and let them all know that I had a Bushmaster targeting one of them with a scope. And if any of them did anything wrong, I was going to take them out. Would I have peace among the five gang members? Yeah. Sure. So uh, peace through intimidation is on the table then, since they're determined, I would presume. Uh, and I would suggest that's the only way they'll get it. Mm -hmm. And then they go on to say to have inclusive societies. What does that mean, inclusive societies? It's a very sexy word nowadays. Every every uh, educrat worth his weight in uh Popcorn uses the word inclusive. In fact, every politician worth his weight in popcorn uses the word inclusive societies. Inclusive is just a wonderful word. So what does that word inclusive mean? Well, it's come to mean um, including all races, religions, uh, sexual preferences. Um, I don't know. Everybody can do whatever they think is right in their own eyes 
which we know is... Uh, so um, let's ask, let me ask you two questions. So if, uh, if you're a Christian and you're ordered to bake a cake for a gay couple that's getting married in an inclusive society, would you have to do it? Yes, you would, uh, because if you didn't, things wouldn't be peaceful anymore. <laughs> and if you were a Catholic or Christian pastor and you believed in Leviticus that says that when a man lies with another man, it's abomination, and uh, someone comes to you and says, we want you to perform a marriage ceremony, would you be forced to violate your own sensibilities and religious convictions in an inclusive society that they envision? Yes. Yes. That's mm -hmm. exactly what they envision. Mm -hmm. They make the rules, not God. Mm -hmm. And, and well, in order to have peace, uh, everyone has to agree with their rules. Mm -hmm. And if 12 million uh, illegal immigrants pour across your border and demand that you pay the bill for medical, dental, housing, food, social services, would that be something you would require of an inclusive society? Yes, it would, and it fits in with their other, you know, thoughts, too, about being determined to end poverty and hunger. Mm -hmm. When the, you know, poor, hungry people come across the border, there's more people for us to make sure we end poverty and hunger for. So then they do believe in Christianity. Christ, Christ uh, fed the thousands. He fed the 5,000 with the basket of bread and the fish. Does this mean they embrace Christianity? <laughs> well, um... I'm, I'm afraid that the uh, guys at the top of the government won't be able to do the miracles like the Lord did, so no, <laughs> they I probably won't get it done very well. <laughs> well, they won't get it done very well, because, you see, when Christ talks about compassion for the poor, he suggests that that's an individual mandate. If you see a poor person on the side of front of your house, maybe you give him a sandwich. If he needs a drink of water like the Good Samaritan, maybe you give him some water. But this is not the kind of uh, aid they're talking about. They're talking about a different kind of inclusion where they have the right to steal the product of your personal weight, your personal work from you, and then give it to someone else so they themselves can claim to be God. They themselves can claim to be the benevolent, compassionate leaders although they will be giving nothing of their own financial resources in the, pro in the process. Is that Christianity? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, it's coercion and theft. Yeah. It's only and, then, and when you think of how we stand as far as our wealth goes in comparison to the rest of the world, mm -hmm. and this is Agenda 2030 for the whole world, then you can quickly see what will happen to us as we make sure, as they are determined, that no one will be in poverty or hungry. Mm -hmm. who, who has the wealth to give? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when they say an inclusive society, what they mean is a society which is inclusive with respect to the special, uh, to the identity politics whom they prefer, they're certainly not referring to uh, inclusion of necessarily people of a Judeo-Christian value, who I believe they are presuming are the enemies here. Well, that's one of the big questions in this whole agenda, where we're going to have peace and inclusion, and they're determined to foster peace. So does that mean they will have to eliminate the Christians in order to have peace? Well, let's not speculate on that. Let's look at con contemporary events. Let's not speculate. The U.N. is there. They want love and inclusion and peace, free of fear and violence for, uh, uh, in, the, in the Middle East, they, 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 in their kumbaya attitudes. Uh, right now we know that ISIS and other terrorist groups are beheading Christians, driving them out of their homes, their towns. Where is the U.N. on that issue? They're absent. <laughs> That's correct. They're absent. Where are the so-called uh, benevolent leaders who are embracing Agenda 20 and all these wonderful, honorable Marxist countries around the world? Where are they on this issue of the of the murder and genocide of Christians in the Middle East at the hands of ISIS and other yeah. Islamo? They're either silent or they're cheering. 
so why are Christians and Jews not receiving the same level of concern about being part of a peaceful, inclusive society? Fear from fear and violence. Why aren't they? Why aren't they protesting? Because I I suppose because they don't know, or they have been uh, so indoctrinated, and we've seen it with uh, tolerance. And um, hate crimes. I mean, they've been teaching here in America, and you can see it when you talk to younger Christians, that they don't quite get the connection sometimes, you know? So, well, well, what's wrong with homosexual marriage? What's wrong with gay marriage? I'm going to answer the question. They don't get it. I'm going to answer the question. No one's going to like this answer. You want to know why they're not standing up and speaking? Because the people that wrote this document have an ingrained, deep-seated hatred and contempt for America, America's Judeo-Christian values, and capitalism. And what this really is is get-evenism. That's what this is. But they have taken their contempt, their loathing contempt for America, their loathing, snarly contempt for Jews and Christians and Judeo-Christian values, their loathing contempt for our Constitution, and they have enshrouded in a bunch of noble words. They have hidden it. They have taken something which is basically evil and guttural and nasty, and they've encapsulated it in a bunch of noble-sounding happy talk, sustainable, inclusive, peaceful, just to hide their true nature. They hate us, Robin. Absolutely. I know that. I, know. I agree with that. And I, and it's not it's no different than the liberals in America. They put pretty words on things. They pass laws that sound like a good thing, but the law the, the words behind the the title are totally opposite of the words of the title of the laws they pass. And uh, for the, uh, you know, um, person that's working hard in America trying to keep their head above water or trying to create wealth, you know, they see the little sound bite and it sounds good. But it isn't good, you know. You only have to take one bite into it and take a moment and study it, and you'll see that it's not good at all. It's rotten. Let's go to the last part of this statement on peace. And we probably won't okay. finish this during this segment, but I want to start it. It's profoundly important. It's another one of these things which appears innocuous, but it's extremely revealing about the corrupt, the, 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 the corrupt nature of how they think. They say, quote, there can be no sustainable development without peace and no peace without sustainable development. What does that mean, Robin? No peace. No sustainable development without peace, and no peace without sustainable development. What are they saying? And by the way, what are they omitting from this equation? Yeah, I, you know, I have trouble wrapping my brain around it because their sustainable development, uh, as I understand it in an American way, is uh, you know, smart growth is. Uh, um, in and of itself, uh, from just watching it in uh, uh, take place, creates um, crime and unrest <laughs> rather than peace. So, uh, so <laughs> if they're talking about the earth itself, then it's very peaceful if there's no human beings. Um, I, so, I, I mean, I, I have trouble wrapping my head about around what they're exactly getting well, to. That's why I said I'm this gonna, wording I'm is gonna, very interesting. I'm going to help you with that after the break, and I'm going to blow you away when I give you my analysis of this. So, okay, folks, stay with us. When we good. come back... Commissioner Rothschild is going to translate this sentence. There can be no sustainable development without peace and no peace without sustainable development. Stay with us. We're on Liberty Works Radio Network. We'll be back in five minutes to reveal. Welcome back to Liberty Works Radio.
Radio Network. This is Commissioner Richard Rothschild, and you're listening to this evening's episode of Carol Confidential. I'm here with Robin Frazier. Welcome back, Robin. Thank you. You know, after thinking about this for a couple minutes on the break, I have another thought. Okay, and just repeat. Um, you're you're going to comment on the statement that's in here, this uh, amusing statement. Uh, I'm going to read it for our audience that just joined us. There can be no, this is from Agenda 2030, there can be no sustainable development without peace and no peace without sustainable development. So tell me, what what are your thoughts on this? Well, peace, the peace that they want is for the Christians to shut up and go away (laughs) because the Christians shine light on their deceptive, agenda okay okay let, so, me, let me comment on that and then i'll let you continue let me make it a little okay. bit broader the piece that they want is submission to their state-sponsored coercion that's the that's the piece that they want we dictate you submit peacefully okay right but their main detractor are christians who know the truth and won't allow them to move forward with an agenda that uh, goes against uh, the biblical worldview. I agree with that. That's their main enemy. Okay. So if they can eliminate, so they can't push their sustainable development agenda without getting rid of the main offend- the main people that shed light on their. Uh, scheme, and that's the Christians. Okay, let's define sustainable development now. Let's broaden this so we complete the sense. So what is sustainable development? Here's what I say sustainable development. Sustainable development it is whatever the U.N. says it is. It is a consortium. It is a series of dictates coming from an unelected group of thousands of people in the U.N. who were never elected by any American citizen, telling us what's, what kind of development patterns are approved by the U.N., so there can be no government-approved mandates without submission. submission right. It's pretty much just control. Support. You could just say control of the people. <laughs> right. It's sustainable development. It's control by them. Be, right. And there can be no there can be no control of the people without a world government issuing its dictates. Right. So that yeah. second part they can't obtain the peace amongst those that are left okay let we'll eliminate the christians in order to have our sustainable development without too much kickback or as much as we get from them but then and we can't even keep peace with who's left over without having total control I, sustainable I, I, development. I, that's correct. And then that raises another question. So what are they displacing? Well, I'm going to give you a hint. They're displacing two key things here with this statement. They're, they're displacing two things. Can you guess what one of them is, Robin? They're displacing two key things. Is that what you're saying? Yes. What is it that they're displacing with this statement? God. God. That's correct. That's one. And what is the second thing they're displacing? Freedom. Absolutely. You get, Robin, you get two goals. So they're displacing individual ding, liberties. Ding, 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 ding. And God, ding, 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 right? Because what our founding fathers would have said is that there can be no individual freedom without God. Well, they're not going to say that. That's what they would say. There'd be no individual freedom without God. Because, you see, under Christianity, we are commanded not only to love our neighbors, but we're commanded to love our enemies and pray for them. And Judeo-Christian values, and even more specifically Christianity, sets forth the underpinnings of society that allows people to live together even though they may be different, and in fact, even though they may be enemies. Does that same value system exist under, for example, Islam? Absolutely not. Islam says to murder the infidels. Kill the infidels, right? Well, actually, they have an option. It's the infidels are given to a choice. Uh, well, right, they can. They, they can, can choose Islam, or they can they convert can be, to Islam, or they can die. No, they can die. That's right. Or they can die. 
Does Which Christianity say convert? Keep peace through their does, sustainable does, development. Does Christianity, does Christianity order us to either convert our neighbors or kill them? Absolutely not. <laughs> so is fundamentalist Christianity the same as fundamentalist Islam, or are they exact opposites? They're exact opposites. I agree. They're exact opposites. And that's why there's very little peace in the Middle East today. Even among Islamic countries, they've been fighting and killing each other for the past 1,100 years, 1,200 years. Yeah. It's... There's no tolerance. You see, the problem here, ladies and gentlemen, is there needs to be a value system. And that value system, we know what the best value system in the world is. It comes from God. It's, it's the Judeo-Christian value system as embodied in the Ten, in the Ten Commandments and as embodied in uh, the New Testament. When George Bush said that uh, democracy made America great, he didn't know what he was talking about. Democracy never made any country great. You layer democracy in front of a, a, on top of an Islamic uh, country, you'll just end up with people voting new leaders into office by majority rules that are still going to kill each other. See, it wasn't democracy that made America great, and we're not a democracy anyway, we're a constitutional republic. It was right. Judeo-Christian values that made America great. Absolutely. Where are those Judeo-Christian values in Agenda 2030? They are totally missing, They're except totally missing. that they use words that sound kind of like it, <laughs> like peace, and they just have different uh, definitions. Mm -hmm. So let's move on. Now that we've uh, talked that, I hope that our listeners have found that intriguing. They get yeah, and I, you know what I would like to do, Rich, sure. is talk a little bit about um, the Syrian refugees, because it kind okay. of fits in here. Um, and it is, uh, I got several emails today about weighing in uh, to Congress and not allowing, you know, or not spending money to bring Syri you know, Syrians over here as refugees. And why, why would we not want to do that? As, as we're Christians, and this is what they play on. We're Christians, and we love our enemies, and we do care for the people. We are sorry that they are having trouble. But why do we not want to bring Syrian refugees into America? Well, let me answer that question with a question. Is, in this case, is our enemy's enemy our friend? Not in this case, because no, we know no, because that the Syria people, has tanks pointed towards Jerusalem, <laughs> towards Israel, right, as right. we speak. Right. The, They're the Syrian, not our friends. They're not our allies. The same Syrian refugees that are the refugees right now were trying to, dis to kill and destroy Israel yesterday. Mm -hmm. And once they get here, they may try to kill and destroy us. Why wouldn't they? Why do we think they wouldn't? Well, I think Obama's counting on it, quite frankly. And so is Mr. O'Malley, apparently. But what did, uh, what did Christ say about that? Did he say we should always give aid to our enemies? He said, basically what he said was, be gentle as doves, but wise as what? Serpents. As, uh, serpents, yeah. Wise as serpents. So why would we bring people into our country who still embrace a basic religious theocracy, predicated on demands to convert or kill us. Right. And, and let's, yeah. let's, take, let's take this up to another issue. Let's talk about Ben Carson and even Marco Rubio. Mm -hmm. They were both asked the same question at different times. Should an, uh, should an Islamist, well, they, they keep using the word Muslim, but I, I don't like to use that word because Muslims is a demographic group. I like to refer to the theocracy. So I'm going to use uh -huh. the word, the I word, Islamist. Should an Islamist be allowed to, 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 hold, to hold a position of president in the White House? Rubio says yes. Ben Carson says absolutely not. <laughs> Who's right? Ben Carson. <laughs> yes, Ben Carson is correct. Because why is Ben Carson right? It, why, why is he right? Aren't we commanded to love our fellow men, even our enemies? We can love them, and we welcome them to come here legally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we cannot allow um, a, a group, any group, that does not agree with the laws of our land to be rulers of the law, uh, rulers of our land. That's correct. We cannot, Let me elaborate not allow on that. them to serve. Their, their laws are... 
different, and, and, and not just different, but they are against our laws. And let me, let me elaborate on that, Robin, because all of our presidential candidates seem to have a hard time articulating it clearly. So I'm going to be so bold as to try to articulate it. Okay. Islam is not simply a religion. It is a complete political religious theocracy. Right. Okay, and it has yeah. prescriptions in it that are irreconcilably incompatible with a constitutional republic. Let me say it again, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. The belief systems and the Islamic political religious theocracy are irreconcilably incompatible. They cannot coexist. It is a caste system, first of all. Islamic males, followed by Islamic females, followed by people of the, the book, the dhimmis, followed by mm -hmm. the infidels. Is there any such class stratification under our Constitution, Robin? No. All men are created equal. And endowed by their creator with what? Certain what? Una unalienable rights. And, and among them are? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Is that what Islam believes about all men and women of all races no. and religions? No, it not, does not. Not right. at all. And you know that's what? why, you know, we cannot commingle that. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who have just graduated high school and college that uh, choose to believe, drink the Kool-Aid from your college professors, I want to tell you all something. Um, if these people, the, the, the greatest opponents of, of Islamic law tend to be Islamic females because they are treated very poorly under Islamic law, Sharia law. They have very mm -hmm. few rights, and they tend right. to be the greatest opponents. That's why it's always the males who we see on the front lines demanding Islam law. Hey, you know, for those people that don't believe in Christ, the idea of having 72 virgins probably sounds pretty good to them. It's not what I want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, the, the, it, people should have an understanding of what they really teach, and they could see why it's incompatible. And, and the Bible warns about being unequally yoked in all kinds of different realms, and uh, that would be one of them. You know, once we we cannot be yoked with people that have beliefs, a belief system that's totally void of uh, the things that God teaches in His Bible. So let me ask one more question, Robin, before we run out of time here. Okay. I think that most people, even though they know very little about their government, even even the most uneducated people in America could tell you who the president is, you know, Barack Obama. They might be able to mention a senator or two or a congressman or woman, you know, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid. They might know who a Newt Gingrich was, used to be. They, 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 they might know uh, who a Marco Rubio is. I think there were something like 15,000 people attended this U.N. convention. And it says here on, on the introduction, of, it says, We, the heads of the state and government and high representatives meeting at the U.N., have decided today on a new set of goals. On behalf of the people, we've adopted historic decisions on a comprehensive, far-reaching plan, blah, 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 blah. I have a challenge for all of our students out there, okay? I dare you to name two representatives of the United States that you voted for that are at this convention. I dare you. I dare any listener in this audience to name two representatives from America without getting onto the Internet who they voted for who are representing them at this U.N. convention. Robin, can you name two? I can't. I can't. But these people are claiming to be taking decisions for the world. I didn't vote Absolutely. for any of these people. I don't want anybody from China or Venezuela or Morocco or South Korea or North Korea I don't want them or Hanoi representing me at the U.N. I didn't vote for them. And boys and girls, students, you didn't vote for them either. They don't know what you want. And I got something else that you're not going to like to hear. They don't give a damn what you want. Well, Robin, we're up against a hard break. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I hope you found you. today's discussion intriguing. Robin and I, were going to continue this discussion, I suspect, for probably several days, several more shows into the future. Robin, have a great evening. Folks, uh, we'll talk to you again on Thursday. God bless you, and uh, tune in again on Thursday as we continue this discussion on Agenda 2030 on the Liberty Works Radio Network, LWRN.net. Bye-bye.